fourth attempt poured. There was a couple of things that went uh, wrong here. First, I forgot to uh, to add on a couple of vents in places I think needs venting. It would be interesting to see how that uh, went. Also, you probably saw that uh, my pouring basin was too shallow and it started overflowing into the riser. So there was two streams colliding down there. Might have caused some porosity or turbulence issues, but might not. Exciting. I've removed the sprue and the feeder and uh, had a look at the result and it's almost perfect. There's a few things here that makes it unusable without um, welding. As you can probably hear, a new model is printing. I've done a few modifications and I'm going to do another attempt in this video. I know you're annoyed by me hitting stuff, stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so this is almost perfect. I think if I fix a couple of issues, you saw one of them, the, the sprue is, uh, or the pouring basin was far too shallow. That's because I didn't have enough plaster and I thought it would be okay. It didn't. It poured over into the riser.
The fifth one is a winner, I think. I've removed the sprue and the riser and uh, I've dug out all the, the gypsum or plaster. And apart from some flaws here and there, and all of them seem to be caused by either parts of the mold falling into the into the mold or um, or plaster penetrating the layers in the 3d print uh, but all all these flaws are uh, in places which uh, are easy to fix by welding or just grinding them out the one flaw that's not that easy to fix if it is a problem at all is the a, a tiny uh, notch in the wall between one of the A transfers and the exhaust port. Um, I think this also was caused by uh, plaster penetrating the, um, the print. But it might go away after machining. Because there's 4mm of wall that's uh, going to be machined away to take this out to 14mm. So it might not be a problem. Or it might need a tiny weld bead on there. If possible, because it's kind of deep into the cylinder. But uh, it's it's a success. It's a success. This one is. Uh, there's no casting flaws here. There's only mold flaws and uh, and flaws coming from the three D print. So I'm not going to stop here. I'm. Uh, this one is probably usable, and I will probably destroy it pretty fast. Because I'm going to run that piston with that retained ring and uh, it's uh, it's not well researched, at least not by me and not by many others either. So I'm going to keep casting cylinders. I'll at least cast a couple more of this design now that I know how to do it to get it to work. Now this casting, I vibrated the mold and that actually seemed to produce more bubbles. I've chipped away uh, quite a few bubbles here. Also taking the mold to 400 degrees Celsius dries out all the water and evaporates the PLA completely but it also makes it uh, really prone to cracking and there's... I did not have the issue with uh, broken pieces of the mold uh, when I just brought it to 300 degrees Celsius so maybe a middle ground, 350, maybe that's better. So I'll try that next time. I'll also increase the temperature of the 3D printer slightly and increase the extrusion multiplier with a little, uh, maybe 5%. Get it to slightly over extrude and uh, also print it a little bit hotter to make the bonds between the layers better. So this with the exhaust uh, bridge there won't happen again. Hopefully. But I can't see any porosity. Well, there's a slight bit here where the two streams of uh, metal met just after the sprue. But that's uh, in the part I'm going to machine away. So, um, yeah, it's a success. It's a success. Hooray! Thanks for watching. See you next time.